Welcome to, to yet another episode of Red Carpet Reviews, full on reviews on vintage dirt bikes. With today on the carpet, the Yamaha XT500, and we are diving into the 10 technical difficulties to prepare for when buying or owning a vintage XT500. She's pretty, isn't she? It is a great machine. And with every great machine comes great history. And with every great history comes great battle scars, great adventures, and probably great reparations done by a so-called mechanic previous owner, which is maybe not be done properly. Owning or buying an XT500, you will have to prepare to find some technical issues because it's an old bike it's been through places and of course every machine after 45 years will have some technical flaws you will find today we are handling the 10 technical issues you will you are most likely to find we are starting with small ones and we will build our way up and i'm pretty scared for number nine if i tell you so the first technical difficulty is the starting you we, we all know the xc 500 can be a bit of a bitch to start and I know all about it because I almost broke my ankle and thought of the name kickback because of it. Um, it can a kickback and it can be a bitch to start cold or hot. We've asked Jeffrey Waardenaar from Motor Gadgets Punthorst and he has given us some tips on, start, on starting the machine. Uh, it, it's got various um, uh, explanations and uh, we're not going to dive all into that but uh, check the uh, possibility of starting hot and cold when you're buying a bike. Having owned several of these machines, there's two uh, technical difficulties which I find very annoying, which is this wibbly wobbly brake pedal, because the axle is actually mounted in the frame, and after a lot of time of use, the, the hole in the frame will wear out, causing free play on the wibbly wobbly brake pedal and also causing damage to your carter sides. Hey guys, the Kickback company specializes in vintage off-road fashion and culture. So, Being a drum brake only machine of a 45 year old, the drum brakes uh, um, eventually wear out the chrome layer in the drum. Uh, resonating in the fact that the brake shoes themselves will not press the sides anymore in full power aka it breaks like shit especially having a very old front wheel especially being wet warm or with a passenger on the back if you come to a very serious braking situation you probably work your way around it or brake and hold on for your dear life being a six-fold machine the turn signals are not so happy with their job, maybe even more unhappy than the ones on the average BMW drivers. Um, if you need to signal your neighbor to, for, for an SOS, the XT500 might not be the best machine to do so. There are, however, some modifications to make the lighting of this machine a lot better. Yeah. Underneath here is the air filter box, which is made out of plastic, and it was very close to the original exhaust system, making the front part of the airbox often broken or molten and it's pretty hard to find a new one. Also the airbox hoses will get brittle after times and will crumble like a, like a cookie. The good thing about this machine is that there's a couple, a couple of companies worldwide providing you with good aftermarket products like plastics, electrics and a lot of other parts to make the restoration of this bike fairly easy. However, there's a couple of parts which are very difficult to find, either aftermarket or second hand. The first of those parts is the, the cockpit. It's difficult to find one with the day counter still on it, which is this thing on the side, or without the, um, the colors on, on the frames very colored by the sun. 
Also, the exhaust is very difficult to find. This is a very special one because it's from the 76, but the original exhaust from the 77 Plus with the flame box here, it's difficult to find originally and not rotten. And often also the flame box already came off or is taken off to make some more noise back in the day. There is some companies which make these mufflers uh, anew, but it's an like expensive repair. Finally on these parts is the tank. It's very difficult to find an original paint tank that is not dented from the sides. A lot of them, they have been repainted like this one, which is also very nice. But especially the alloy tanks are very hard to get. There is some aftermarket ones from India, but they do not fit well on this machine. So if you have a nice tank, maintain it well and do think of using a plastic one when riding off-road. A lot of the times back in the day, people used a chain that actually broke off while riding, causing a sort of whiplash through the machine and breaking everything it hit. Often this little cap, uh, the bolt-on parts are broken and here you can even see the carter uh, having a chip out because of this mistake. So it's good to check if they are already uh, nicely because otherwise you have to bolt on these mounts again. Other parts which sometimes get welded on are the foot pegs because they can break off while you fall or even the front sprocket, the shift lever or the kickstarter uh, which are very annoying to repair again so check those before buying one. So the, the kickstarter of this machine is what gave our, our business the name Kickback. The kickstarter is a loving and hating relationship between you and the machine. And the XT500 knows all about it. It's got a built-in kickback projector, which is like a half moon plate in, inside the engine, but it often breaks off. And it can actually shoot out of your crankcase, causing a hole in your, in your crankcase, or it will fall to the sump guard, uh, the sump filter all the way down in your crankcase. But this machine can fire back. So please start it properly. Um, and don't use your throttle, we'll tell you all about the starting video we've made. The most expensive repairs on an XT500 are of course in the engine. Having a 45 years of life experience, it's used, it's abused, and not every part was uh, as well uh, engineered as the other. We have asked Jeffrey Waardenaar from Motor Gadgets in Punthorst, the Netherlands, to share his experience with us because he has rebuilt hundreds of XT engines in the, in the, in the past and he is a true hero when it, it comes to restoring and maintaining these bikes. So let's talk about the engine problems. So <coughs> an, average, an average riding XT500 will need a uh, engine rebuilt at around 50,000 kilometers because probably it, it will start with the uh, piston and the cam chain being worn out, which will cause a rattling sound, oil loss, and a loss of compression. So the valves of this machine opening and closing the uh, inlet and exhaust uh, pipes uh, are known to be formed oval, or and even the uh, valve seats will have some problems, also causing ticking sounds, loss of, of compression, uh, and just a not fine running engine. You will probably need to change valves or reshape them like Jeffrey does and also um, uh, renew the valve seats in them. The valve rockers moving the valves up and down also are known to wear out on their chrome plate, uh, causing that to uh, causing too much free play on your valves while you actually uh, set them correctly. Also the axle on which these rockers move, they tend to wear out and will need new bushings when revising. So always be aware of rattling, ticking or knocking sounds in your engine. It's okay if it sounds like a machine, but you have to be aware a little bit. The ticking in the valves can just be a valve adjustment, but it can also mean the overall valves, what I was talking about. Every it tells us that if the valves are oval, that if, if it, it runs stationary, 
sometimes it can fall out and burst the uh, inside of the engine the wrong way around. So if you have that in your XT, go check it out. Another thing that's uh, known is the connecting rod, the push rod of the, uh, of the crankshaft. It is made with a, a copper layer around it and the copper layer on the small end uh, at the a piston end is, is known to wear out, causing a bit of free play on the piston pin, which can also make a sound and make your engine not happy. When revising your engine, take it apart, clean it properly and check everything. If you are not known with this setup, search yourself a specialist that knows all about it. Finding yourself a low mileage XT500 might feel like uh, finding a needle in, a, in, the, in a, a, a ASIC because it looks lovely. But sometimes an engine with a low mileage can have other problems than an, an engine that is running often and smoothly. For example, parts like the, the piston rings or the valve seats can be rusty or even stuck. Uh, so it is very good to have an engine that is running often or even when having a, a low uh, mile engine open it up and give it some maintenance. So we've had engine problems, we've had starting issues, we've had ugly tanks, braking issues, we've had it all and we were waiting for the most bad technical issue this bike has. I've had it several times and I hate it. Of course, I'm talking about the side stand. Look at this. Why did they make it a couple of centimeters longer? Of course, this can all be fixed with a small block. And I would rather have this than engine problems. These were the, the 10 most likely technical issues on the Yamaha XT500. Don't be scared, it's still one of the most reliable machines on the market. Just have these tips in mind, be prepared and treat her carefully. Warm her up, oil her up, uh, ride her like she's used to and, sh and she's meant to. Uh, and all these issues can also be eased up by some modifications. Our next video on the Yamaha XC 500 is about the 10 best modifications to make on this bike. If you're a purist, don't watch it. Stay tuned. This was Wes from the Kickback Company. Go check out our merch line on the, on the XC 500 on our web shop. And if you have not already, please subscribe to our channel so we can keep on making these videos.